gonna make the profiles boom, 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 boom. What it is, I'm gonna tell you exactly what it is. What it is is real talk in real life by a real one who's really been there and done that. Raiders, that's what the fuck it is, right? What it ain't is no added preservatives, no bullshit, man, no fake stories. We're not getting down like that right here on Gunner's Profiles, man. We're giving it to you raw, mm, toma, and rugged, man. So let's get kind of like fucking uh, the WWE pedal real. You know what I mean? It's just choreographed, but it's going to be real at the end. Bang, bang. You read between the lines. And I'm in noodle style in direct fashion. What I wanted to talk about was, you see the Bawosa right there on the thumbnail? Mm-hmm. Barrio Baker Zone, Jaime Osuna. Some people call him a J-Cat. Some people call him a notorious killer. So I don't know what to call him. I can't call it like an alcoholic, but at the end of the day, I will say this story that I'm about to tell you basically isn't his profile, it ain't about, you know, the get down with him. Of course, in order to elaborate on the story that I'm going to tell, I'm going to have to speak on him. But at the same time, in the meantime, in between time and in menudo style, um, I'm going to talk about what really happened. Is it a cover up? So I was scared, did uh, some things go on, some extracurricular activities that maybe we don't know about? One never knows does one, man. Conspiracy theories, 101, right here with the gun. Bang, bang on profiles. So trip. Jaime Osuna, if you guys haven't heard his story, I don't know what planet you're on, right? This bottle um, was a South Sider from Barrio Bakers, okay? Um, Bakersfield, California, a notorious hood, a notorious Barrio out of Bakersfield, a very well-known and well-respected Barrio, Barrio Bakers that has been around for a long time in the city of Bakersfield, California, back when it was the 805 y todo, oh my, right? Um, this guy grew up, uh, with his parents in poverty, you know, just like anyone else from a barrio, from the hood, from the ghetto, from the cucarachas, from the motherfucking bed bugs, so I was scared, from the welfare check, right? He came from all that food stamps, oh my, when they were still paper, remember the brown dollar bill? All that, penny candies and everything. Um, and he comes from poverty, um, but just like me coming from poverty and he coming from poverty, so I scared, I'm still here, almost, and my screws are tight. His were loose. I don't know if something happened to him along the way. Maybe he's seen something he wasn't supposed to see. He didn't get the attention or the love or the dedication or maybe one of his fucking girlfriends hit the... Remember whenever he used to write the no, he used to put yes, no, maybe. Maybe she checked the no straight up and he was just brokenhearted. Whatever it was, um, it started him off on Achilles spree on a rampage in his mind. You know, this bottle was Michael Myers in a real way. Um... He started going fucking crazy, homes. Now, you got to understand, these are what they call 5150 or J-Cats. People that are not there and there's no rhyme or reason why. So, I can't call it. I don't know why he does the things he does, but he does them indubitably, right? So, of course, this Vanto, as a young menacing kid, man, he always was different. Homeboys from his neighborhood says, oh, he wasn't all that. What the, the Vanto wasn't the craziest homeboy in the fucking barrio, but he was the craziest homeboy in the barrio, meaning uh, the Vanto was a stone-cold killer. He was killing animals, things of that nature as a young kid. And, you know, kind of what psychopaths do, sociopaths, psychopaths, um, they do all that weird shit, right? And people weren't seeing the signs. That's the problem nowadays. Vatos are not paying attention to the words coming out of my mouth and the signs that are coming from every other motherfucker, right? They weren't paying attention. And ultimately what happens is he caught a couple bodies, right? According to him, allegedly he caught one at a very young age, to which they never found out about. So I, was scared. I don't know, man. He could just be fucking, you know, throwing fucking wise tales out there, throwing stories out there just to make himself feel better. Um, I don't see why you would say you did caught a body that you didn't catch. But at the same time, man, um, it's never been discovered that he did that. So we're going to leave that word lie. At the same time, he did um, murder a young lady at a hotel, you know, where he stabbed her several times, put scissors in her back and all that, man. It was very unfortunate. She had like a 20 kids. And um, it was just a bad situation. He did this for no other reason but because he could, because he felt like it. Now, of course, uh, he got a lot of notoriety for that. This became a notorious case, especially in the region, the Bakersfield area. Uh, people were tripping like, damn, they're about to fucking do some psychopath shit. They're crazy. You know, we ain't never had a bottle like this in, the, in this area, right? Um, and of course, he gets incarcerated. He catches life. He catches life because it was such a heinous and ruthless crime. And when he went to court for it, of course, they asked him, hey, how do you feel? And he was like, I'll do it again, right? So when someone says things like that, so I'll do it again, mm -mm -mm, I don't feel bad. There's no remorse. Uh, several of her family members pleaded to the court. 
Um, and they ultimately gave him what he needed to get, which was life without the possibility. He got, he got L, the L Y, right? You need that. Go ahead and sit your ass down. Sit your little skinny ass down. Almost. You ain't right for the society, right? You're not right for the hint for the people. You're fucked up. You need to go to church, eh? But trip out. Um, this Balto started getting worse and worse while incarcerated, okay? Um, he started getting into rituals and things of that nature and catting out. And people knew in prison, he was in Corcoran prison, that he wasn't all there. Of course, he was placed in a single man cell to not to have a cellie because he had threatened cellies. He had gotten a few altercations with cellies. He had gotten a few altercations on the yard. And there's Vatos like that in prison, man. I've been in prison plenty of times to tell you there's Vatos that just need to be by themselves. So it's going go stand in the corner. I say, go over there in the corner, homes, in a menudo style and go kick back over there because uh, you can't participate over here in these reindeer games. So what happens is um, everybody on the Yarda knows this Vato got a few screws loose. He's just not working with the full deck. So that's good. He got the Jokers, but he's missing the Aces. Um, and so people left him alone pretty much. They thought he was just a cat. And that's how it is in prison. Vato's are like, we ain't tripping out that Vato. Do you want to sell up with them? Well, I mean, to what degree of selling up? Like going in the cell. Fuck that. It's like, you know what I mean? It's different, eh? It's down the yard. He could be over there, but in the cell, he's right there. Um, and he, of course, he made several threats that if he had a cell, he was going to do heinous things to him, bad things to him. And of course, nothing ever materialized because the Placas knew enough than to put someone in the cell. Well, guess what? You know what I mean? One day, one day, we'll be together. They decide that if for no other reason, they should put a Southsider in the cell, right? Now, this Vato was doing a little bit of tiempo and was almost at the door. But they had been down for a while, man. Um, a righteous dude, man, just trying to do his time, homes. Participated in the reindeer games like he was supposed to. Just doing his thing. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say what led up to them selling this guy up. You know, there's a lot of different stories. Some of the stories are he got into it with the Blackas. They weren't feeling the way he was coming at them. So they said, okay, you want to play? Oh, yes. Oh, we going to play. We got the perfect sell for you. Osuna, uh, mount up. It was a cold dog. You know what I mean? And boom, they put him in that cell. It didn't take but a day. Okay, it didn't take but a day. And like I said, there's no rhyme or reason to selling this guy up with a guy who was supposed to be having a single cell chrono anyways. And maybe he wasn't going to have a single cell chrono. Maybe it wasn't a legit one. But at the same time, man, everybody knew don't put no one with this fucking bottle. So he'll do something strange for a little piece of chain. He'll do something bad to his cellie because he had already put it out there that this is what he was into. You know, he was a super J cat man with psychopathic tendencies and people knew just stay away from him. But anyways, they put this guy in his cell. And what happens? I'm going to tell you what happens. So I got, on Paru, I got the tapes or the pictures. Um, he beheaded his celly, carved things into his body, did several things that uh, I can't even go into graphic detail. It's just too graphic, man. He did movie quality shit. HD, homes, 4K. This Vato did him like a LG 4K fucking TV in high definition. I said, right, he fucking got him, homes. This Vato was no longer pinta bound. I seen pictures where Vato, there was a body part over here and a body over there. And, but this is what I wanted to talk about. Okay. So it happened. It happened. He did whatever sick, twisted shit he fucking did in that cell to him all night, man. Um, took off a piece of his body part, wore it as a necklace. I mean, just, just crazy stuff. Unimaginable stuff. Movie shit, right? Touch your chin on Sasuke Leatherface. The Blackheads did a count. Okay, count time. Now, everybody knows that's been incarcerated. When it's count time, two things are going to happen. Either you're going to stand up so they can see some type of movement. Because Sasuke, they need to see that you're breathing. Or they're going to have you sit up on your bunk. One of the two things is going to happen. And, of course, the Blackheads are going to go by fast. So you're going to say, okay, one by one, so two by one, one, three, four, four. This is how they do it. They don't really even look in too good. But they look enough to see that you're fucking breathing. Lightweight, Right? Anyone that's been there, and every institution varies, man. Every place is different. Some places, man, they just fucking walk by hella fast. Like, did that, did that even count me? He's like, give shit. He's slipping, right? He's lacking in his macking, right? Um, but for the most part, most of the placas will. They'll say, hey, raise your hand. I'm here. You know, this ain't third grade. Or and it is what it is, okay? Um, but they missed it. They missed four and a half gallons of sangre all over the cell. They missed fucking writing and blood on the wall. They missed a head on the table and a body over there, right? They missed this Vato wearing a Vato's ear on a necklace. They missed sangre from his fucking eyelids all the way down to his fucking chichis. They missed a lot, okay? They missed a whole lot. Um, 
But according to the report, both of those guys were fucking in good mind state. They were both breathing. They were both alive, right? It's always been questionable. Okay, I'm not trying to sit here and say it was the old Folsom setup. This bottle was set up because you know what? Ah, you know, I don't buy that one. I'm, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I, I don't buy that. I mean, it's possible. It's quite possible. But at the same time, um, I think it was just a slippage. So let's get one slippage, right? Word of the day. I think it was just a slippage. They slipped up. They put him with that vault and that vault did bad things to him. To what degree of bad things? The worst. The highest degree. The highest level. Um, now, where the blackers did fuck up those when they went by and said, oh, we've seen them. No, they were both. They were wide. So, okay, I know for sure. One was eating a sopa and the other one was watching Soul Train. I know for sure they were like, oh, bro, I've seen them, right? Charlie, Holmes, you're lying. I'm stop disrespecting, right? That vault, one of them was gone, bro. One of them was Fugazi. He was fake. He was no longer there, Holmes. He wasn't briefing, right? Orderly, in the words of George. He wasn't breathing, bro. Um, now, of course, this black guy said, no, I swear, man, I've seen him. I've seen him. Nah, Charlie, I beg to differ because the coroner and the way that the timeline works is is there was no way. You know what I mean? That there's about to could have been. So it could have been, like I said, just felt it, he overlooked them. Um, but a lot of people are looking into it. It seems like there's more than meets the eye when it comes to this shit, right? So let's get, at least from my perspective on it. Um, now, over time in history, there's a lot of things that have occurred. A lot of fishy situations. Of course, we had the gladiator wars in Corcoran. We already know how that shit was going. Vatos were being placed in Yardas together. And so, okay, you got a hundo? I got a hundo on it, right? So let's get, watch out. He's going to knock him out in the sixth round. There was fucking bets being placed. There was things happening, Okay. Now, we all know that history. We all know about the Corcoran Gladiator Wars. It seems like Porco has a fucking treacherous history. It seems like they have a murky and fucking uh, scandalous history, Vato. You know what I mean? Handle the scandal type shit. It's a scandalous history, man, all the way stemming from the Gladiator Wars between, you know, all different factions in the shoe and then extending to just this incident and other incidences I'm sure that we don't know about. Um, but this one just seemed a little fishy to me. Uh, first of all, that this guy would be placed with someone as dangerous as this guy. And everybody, don't get it twisted. So, okay, don't, menudo, right? Don't get it fucked up. Bang, bang. Everybody's dangerous in prison. So you can wake up in the morning. Gotta get up. Gotta get going. I'm gonna be dangerous today. You could be dangerous that day. Everybody in prison knows how to wiggle. Everyone knows how to sharpen a little bit. For the most part, most people do, right? So let's go. You could, you know what I mean? You can get a little something, something if you need to. Um, so everyone can be dangerous. So... To say that this guy was more dangerous than others, Charlie. I'm going to retract that statement because I guess he was just as dangerous as everyone else. But when you have a Jake cat that got the pinchy pentagram on his fucking head and the Joker's wild face, and he's just a little different, I'm going to think twice about putting some guy who's just trying to fucking make it to the guys with him, you know? I'm going to think twice before I do that. I'm going to second that emotion, you know what I mean? If you feel like giving me a lifetime of devo, I'm going to second that emotion straight up. Um, but they didn't, you know, they chose to do it. And to which degree of Flacca did it, I don't know. Uh, he just wasn't thinking. You know, he overlooked the chrono, I guess. Um, but he was placed there and bad shit happened. Now, of course, Jaime Osuna has stuck to his fucking mud, right? Meaning if anything fishy did happen and this vato was placed for one reason or another, Jaime has not said anything. Jamie Osuna, Jaime Osuna, whatever you want to call him. Um, I call him Jaime. You could call him Jamie. Fuck it. You know what I mean? La primera. Um, he was placed with them, and this Vato ain't saying nothing. He said, hey, the Vato is in my pinchy cell, and I wanted them out of there in pieces, preferably, right? And this is what happened. And I say condolences to the familia. I'm not here to disrespect the dead. I'm not here to disrespect the Vato, man, because it was very unfortunate, and it was a very sad situation. But such is life in California Department of Corrections, right, where fucking anything could happen at any time. Shit, the shit gets real. Oh, it gets real ugly, Right? And I know right now we're talking about all these different situations and scenarios of people going over here, integrating over there, and what could happen. Well, shit, death's been, hey, I see death around the corner. The, too bad the black I couldn't, right? But it's been happening. You know, shit's been happening. So this guy, Jaime Osuna, now um, is on trial for this, you know? And of course, people are tripping because uh, he's already a lifer. Sounds good. The, the vato's already there. You know, if they give him the death penalty, they're never in California. They're never going to murk him anyways, man. You know, I think the last one they did was Tookie. Maybe someone after that, I think it was Tookie. Uh, but that's just how it is, right? Now, as far as fucking um, what he's going to get out of this situation, I can't call it like an alcoholic, but I think the motherfucker psychopath. I think insanity, right? This is just what I'm thinking. He's already a lifer anyways. 
So fucking hit him with the look. Try to give the vato some help. This vato is screaming and crying for help. The vato is wearing someone's ear, eh? Help. Help me. You know what I mean? He needs help and, and people need to provide that for him. It's the Department of Corrections. Correct some shit, right? So I don't think uh, something's normal when a guy fucking wears a fucking oreja on his fucking chain. But that's just me. Anyway, so I've been looking at this Jaime Osuna, uh, all the different uh, 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 incidences that he's been involved in. Um, you know, I did an extensive research on this guy. And I've come to the summarization just in my own mind, you know, because I'm my own person. I have my own fucking, uh, my own fucking perspective on it. This guy needs help, homes. This guy's not right in his head. This guy's not normal. Anyone that could do something like that to another person is a little bit different, right? Um, what led up into it? If the placa felt some type of way and put that guy because that guy disrespected him, um, should the placa be held liable? Of course. But one will never know because I'm just not saying nothing and the placa dead. So I'll hold, right? I'll plead the fifth, the whole fifth, and nothing but the fifth. So help him, God, right? Of course, nothing's ever going to come of it. When it comes to that, but there are people looking into it, man. There are people that are feeling some type of way. Do I think anything's ever going to come about it? Charlie, you know, it's just another one to sweep under the rug. It's just another something, something that happened. Whether it's something bad did happen, something fishy or something, or it smells like pescado, like a motherfucker, right? Catfish, or a list, right? Or not. I can't call it like an alcoholic. I do know, though, that at the end of the day, um, this Jaime Osuna guy needs fucking therapy, homes. Shock the Put all the needles in his fucking ears and his nose and shit and shock him. Bato, give him some shock there. Give him something because at the end of the day, man, this guy is fucking needs more help than a little bit. Anyways, for those of you that are not up on Jaime Osuna's, all his cases, his story, it's, it's, it's one of those stories. It should be an Anne rule book. You know what I mean? It's one of those stories that takes a lot of twists and turns. And it's an unfortunate thing about a young Latino um, that grew up in poverty, grew up in the ghetto, man. And, and something happened along the way. And it's for each to research and each to Google. What the, the word of the day, Google. To Google and, and, and kind of come to your own summar, summarization of what you think it was, right? Um, me, I think it was just a Vato man who catted out, tried to prove himself to people, got caught up in the situation, and then fucking tat, tatted his whole face down and just catted out even more. Um, but of course, at the end of the day, man, uh, I don't know. I'm not a doctor. Sounds good. You know what I mean? I'm, I, I like rapping like Dr. Dre, but I'm not like Dr. Huxtable. Definitely on Pau not like Dr. Huxtable. Anyways, with that being said, man, I just wanted to put that story out there because there's a lot of he said, she said going on. A lot of people are looking into a lot of different angles with this story. At the end of the day, um, the guy's gone, homes, and one guy's fucking gone in his mentality. And that's just the way it is, man. It's unfortunate and it's an ugly situation, especially when it comes to our own gente, the raza, man. Uh, raza on raza. This definitely was that. Um, and I can't call it. Anyways, with that being said, I hope that you move fast with a purpose. I hope that you get everything that you want coming to you. Remember, at the end of the day, man, it's all about struggling and striving for your familia. Look into the situation, man. You're going to trip out on it. Mm. Please hit that thumbs up if you like this story. If not, you can hit that thumbs down. Have you used the head that wears the crown? I'm going to continue to strive and struggle for what I truly believe in. I just dropped a banger on Gunners Collective. Make sure you slide on over there and trip out on it one time for your mind. And I'm going to continue to do what I does right here. Bang, bang. And in that fashion.